ready to go. On the fan, New York Sports Radio. Mike's on, Mike's on. To get you the sports any way that he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 101.9 FM. WFAN. From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike Zahn, Francesa on the fan on this Monday, the 7th day of May, as we take you through a, uh, eh, not a bad Monday afternoon, uh, as the Mets lick their wounds and head to Cincinnati, which is just brutally bad. And the Mets have always hit in that park, and they've hit home runs in that park. Everybody does, uh, except the Reds. Uh, but the way the Mets are playing right now, who knows? Then they go to Philly. So the Mets limp out of town. I mean, just absolutely crawl out of town after a week they want to forget while the Yankees get ready for after a day off the Red Sox tomorrow. Now, it's a little early to go crazy. It, it's only the second week in May. It's only a handful of games, let's be honest, into the season. All right, you know, it's more than a handful, but it's, it's still, you've played, you know, a fifth of the season. You don't want to get crazy yet. Uh, by anything, although they are right now the two best teams in the sport. We know that. Uh, hopefully uh, Mookie Betts isn't that badly hurt, and he plays because you want everybody at their best. But um, it's a good matchup. We're going to have a lot of fun with it all summer. It looks like one of those summers where they can go head-to-head and chase each other down and uh, have one of those old-time classic uh, first one to 100 seasons. Uh, and that's where we are right now as the Yankees. Even on a day where they try to... Listen, they tried to give the game away Friday night, and they won. Yesterday, their manager, who was saying, I'm not fooling with my pen. I, I got my six innings amazingly out of Irman, but I'm not going to push that envelope, and rightly so. I'm not going to fool with the pen here. I'm giving guys day off, even though I have a day off today. So uh, I don't have a lot to work with here. So if we don't win, fine. He gave it that. Eh, right, one's going to become four. But who knows with these Yankees, it's not enough. And Cleveland hurting, not strong in the pen right now, obviously limited in the pen right now, and uh, uh, playing the very spotty baseball. And the Yankees come back and get three, and then come back and win it as Torres, who, you know, can do everything. We've talked about it. Everyone's raved about it. Listen, nothing to rave about. He's one of those guys who just looks like he came down from a higher league. I mean, he's that, he's that good looking as a young player, that complete, that effortless effort uh, that you get in everything he does and then wins the game with the home run uh, again. Uh, right now, they're so hot that they win games they're not supposed to win. They win games they're not trying to win. And yesterday was one of those days where you would have thought, after Cleveland finally puts the runs up, you would have thought there's no way they are winning that game. Not a chance. Uh, you know, when they go to that part of the pen, you know you're saying, all right, white flag, we'll see you. Take a day off. Let's get ready for the Red Sox. It's been a good run. Let's get ready for the Red Sox and come back and win that game. It is unbelievable what has gone on with that team right now, especially the heroics at the bottom of the order by Hand to Horn and Torres in the last 10 days. So they continue to do it. Uh, big hit by uh, Gaudi, who has struggled so mightily. So the Yankees uh, come up with another win there. But when you're 15-1, and one, uh, and we'll have – Brian Cashman today, and we should because there's a lot to talk about with him in the big picture. But there's not a lot to talk about when you're 15 and 1. Everything is wonderful. All right. They got a few pieces to this and decisions to make and things to talk about. And the Red Sox coming to town. We'll get to that with the Yankee general manager in a couple of minutes. He'll join us at 3 30. Uh, but the other side is where the issues are. The other side is where that 11 and 1 start is now, I'm sure, to be honest with you, a figment of our imagination. <laughs> Let's be honest. Because If you're asking me, are the Mets the team we've seen for the last 20 games or the team we saw for the first 12 games, I'm saying the team we see right now might be worse than the the record even indicates for the last 20 games. This team right now is putrid. Tell me where right now this is even a decent ball club. Their number one pitcher in DeGrom is hurt. Their 1A in Syndergaard seems to be a really off his game. I don't want to make too big about you know too big a deal about a guy giving up two runs, or the fact that he lost the plate, which he never does, or the fact that you see him with the bases loaded, throwing back to back, back to back changeups. He's so fouled up. 
but he only allowed two runs. The problem is two mu- two runs right now is too far, too many for the uh, against the Mets. Right now, the Mets can't muster more than that. And when they get two runs in the first yesterday and could have broken the game open, and Cespedes is out of the game, you're like, no, not, come on, it's one inning. What do you mean he's out of the game? So now he's out of the game. There goes any life in the offense. They have nothing behind the Grom, nothing behind the Grom and Syndergaard right now. You knew it was too much to ask the, that the ground was going to come right back and make his next start, which you know is not the case. And they were caught so short that they didn't even prepare for it. They got to dip into the minor leagues for a guy with a 7 ERA to pitch the game. Lucky he's pitching against the Reds. Who have won eight games this year. I mean, the, the Mets don't know what's going on with the ground. They did not prepare their rotation for this eventuality. They told you that Cespedes has had any one of three different injuries. First it was the hip, then it was the groin, and now it's the quad. You imagine doesn't know what the injury is after the game. And then, listen, the new manager who says the process way too many times for me, okay? I, can't, I cannot hear the process one more time. Matter of fact, that has become the catchphrase in all the sports. When you don't win now, you refer to the process. That is it. It doesn't matter what the sport is. Well, you know, you got to remember, this is part of the process. Everything's the process now. You know what the process is? Nonsense. How about getting your act together? I thought you were going to ask these guys to be accountable. Who on that team is accountable right now? And the manager has lived a lucky charm life because they got off to a fast start. You know what? He has not done a good job. And yesterday's managing was awful. Now, they're not hitting, and bad teams, and the Mets right now right now look like a really, they look like a bad team, they look like a really bad team. And when bad teams don't hit, they look even worse. They look dead. And that's what the Mets look like right now. They look completely dead. But what are you doing? If you're Callaway here, you sit Conforto out because he's A, injured, which we don't know he did, he come back too soon. B, he needs mental days off. Okay, every time I see him now, he's in a discussion with somebody in the dugout about hitting. Whether it's Bruce, whether it's one of the coaches, he's in a, he's in a meaningful discussion in the dugout. But if you're trying to get his confidence back or get him back on the right page, why would you take the opportunity to put him back in the game against a lefty who's dealing? And it's going to make him look foolish. Save him for the one shot he might Make a, you know, make a stand at the plate against somebody later in the game. Why bring him in against a lefty after he's been all fouled up? How bad did he look at the plate? It was like he was a sacrificial lamb. And then worse, what was Callaway doing in the ninth inning? Look down your lineup. There was an eventuality you were going to have to hit for the pitcher if you got any rally. Why did you use Reyes as a pinch runner? To have the catcher come in and take strike three, who is an automatic out. I understand Reyes is not Reyes anymore, but he has, in his career, had 2,000 hits. The man's had 120 triples in his career. He's had 400 doubles. The guy can hit. I understand he's hit lousy this year, but you want Reyes up in that spot, or you want an automatic out up in that spot? Why would you put Reyes in the pinch run? No one you're going to kill yourself down the line. Man, that is, it's like trying to get a run out of them right now. It's like trying to pull a tooth out. I mean, it's unbelievable. They look worse in this segment of games than I even remember them looking at any time in the last three or four years. They They look dead. I understand it's been bad news. The Harvey thing put, cast a little pall over the franchise. You know, the Grom's injured even a little bit is a big problem. They have no catchers and no ability to even go out and get a living, breathing catcher. They have been playing for now a while without a living, breathing catcher. You need one. It helps. Mets cannot afford to have automatic outs in their lineup. They have enough of them. They have one guy swinging the bat well. One guy in the whole lineup swinging the bat well. 
You hope Cespedes breaks out. Frazier doesn't not listen. I'm not knocking Frazier. I, I think Frazier's a solid player, and he's going to get RBIs. He's going to make plays. But let's be honest. Bruce has done. He's been a statue. He's done nothing. Conforto's done less than nothing. Maybe he's hurt. Maybe they rushed him back. I don't know. He doesn't look like Conforto anymore. That's for sure. They have no energy, no life, nothing. No. Last year, two years, the complaint's been, you know, the Mets, all they do is rely on the home run. When they don't hit the home runs, they don't score. Well, you know, they fix that. They fix that. Now they don't hit homers. So they don't score at all. They don't get rallies, and they don't hit homers anymore either. At least the last couple of years, they hit homers. Now they don't do that anymore. They asked him after the game, after the match, after the game. You think Syndergaard's lost any confidence in his uh, in his fastball? No, I don't see that. Really, when he's throwing back to back changeups with the bases loaded, the guy throws a hundred miles an hour, and he's throwing back to back changeups. He hasn't lost any any confidence out there, really. They are such how here's the question I have. How did they ever get to eleven and one? They stink. Right now they are they are so far past bad, they are unwatchable. You can't even dream of a rally right now with that team. And if you were watching the game simultaneously, as soon as the Mets game was ending, here's Torres hitting his home run and you're saying, I'm sick. I was thinking about the person being a Yankee fan, being a Mets fan, watching the Yankees. What do they do? They take out a nice, new, shiny 20-year-old toy who looks like basically, you know, can't miss five-tool wonder boy. Making great plays in the field. Yankees put a guy in for his first start yesterday. He pitched a no hitter. <laughs> Mets bring the guy up from the minors. Got a 42 ERA. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Take your pick. Oh. So while the Yankees can't, they can't, Yankees can't even give one away. I mean, they tried yesterday to put a bow on it. They tried yesterday to wrap it up, put a bow on it, and hand it to the Indians. They still couldn't lose. And the Mets got guys pitch hitting, taking strike three right down the middle. They were hitting about 12. It can't get much uglier. Thank God they go to Cincinnati. At least they get to spend three days in the International League, which is what the Reds are right now. Maybe the Mets will. Mets have always played. Mets have always hit homers in Cincinnati. They've always played well in Philly. So maybe this will somehow awaken them. But right now, you can't have any confidence. They can't put together a five man rotation. They weaken the bullpen. Their lineup is awful. They don't have anything exciting with a young... I mean, it's, it's kind of sad right now. It, it just feels bad. It just really does. Especially, you know, without DeGrom and, and Syndergaard at pitching at peak efficiency, and they're both top pitchers, but if they, if they could pitch at peak efficiency, maybe they could piece things together. But that's with some guy... That's with Bruce hitting. That's with Syndergaard hitting. That's with Conforto coming back to life. Right now, there's nothing there. Do you see how many guys? You look at these averages and these numbers on these Met players right now. It's scary. You, you know, sometimes you have to. And I heard the manager say yesterday, you know, it's a process, which I love. The process. I'm not angry. Listen, you can't react to the games. Oh, really? Which one of the six do you want anybody not to react to? You didn't have a lead the entire week. You didn't have a lead at home this week. Forget a win. You didn't get a lead. You had one after the first inning yesterday, two to one. That was it. The two to one after the top of the second, I should say. They scored a hit a home run in the second. It was two nothing after one. Two one after one and a half. And then on from there. 
but they didn't win a game. They got outscored three to one. They had one lead for the week. And it's a process. It's a process. You gotta remember it's a process. We don't want, we don't want to like overreact right now. Overreact. React a little bit. This hasn't been two games of this. This has been 20 games of this. This is taking a great start and throwing it away with both hands. Imagine where this team would have been without that start. I mean, this team opened with a great run and has now completely thrown it away. And it looks depressing, even though they're going to play bad teams, and a bad team. And then Philly's not a bad team right now. They're actually an improving team. But the point is, even that, which is a comfortable road trip, it just doesn't feel good right now. We don't know what's going on with Cespedes. We don't know what's going on with DeGrom. First, he was not going to miss a start. Now he missed a start. No one seemed to know that because why didn't you get Lugo ready to pitch? You got to reach to the minds for a guy with a 6.75 ERA. It just, it just feels all, it just feels completely lost already. It's depressing. There's nothing right now. You're like, they can't even make a trade for a catcher. They have nothing to give anybody. I am not, repeat, not optimistic about this right now. Very concerned. I understand they still have a winning record, but that's because they didn't play yet this week. Because this thing is sinking fast. And they need to go out and make a couple of moves. They need to get a catch. They need get, you, listen, you can't hide guys for weeks at a time. You can hide a guy for a day. You can hide a guy in a good team for a couple of days. You can't hide a guy for weeks. They need help. And they need some guys to pick it up. I understand they need guys to pick it up. I just don't... I, I just... I'm not buying the process. But you know what? For a couple of days, anyone around here can forget about that because the Red Sox are coming to town. The Yankees and the Red Sox, Cashman at 3.30, DeRose after that, Mets, Derby, too much. Listen, I'm not taking anything away from Justify's performance. It was effortless. But I, I just, I don't know what to make of on what are the messiest tracks I've ever seen, which he got the best of. But, hey, it happened. It's over. So now we'll see if we get a triple crown. Also, he's, Baffert said he was going to do it. He did it. So give him credit. He looked the part. It was a ho-hum race. But, hey, what can you do? Sometimes the weather uh, rears its ugly head, and it sure did on Saturday. It, it really took the life out of that derby. Once a year, you wait for that, and then you get that. It's a tough. But what can you do? It happens. It happens. We got that. We got the NBA. We got everything else going on. We'll get it all rolling on a Monday right after.